there anything that you want your group to be be known for? Like when when somebody thinks outside the program of a, a South Carolina secondary, what what do you want them to think about? Those guys played hard, they played smart, they were tough, and they competed their asses off. Um, you know that you like to be known as that type of group. How, how does what you believe fit with Clayton White and, and what he wants to do? Are there are there any any things that are just directly in line and some things that yeah, maybe definitely. He's had to um, Clayton has this system that he's had a lot of success with, and it's um, where you want guys to play hard, you go want guys to be disciplined, and you know I, we're we're about the same thing from from that respect and. His, his, that's what he demands um, in his defense. And those are the same things that I naturally demand of the guys that I've always coached. So it's a, it's a great win. Coach, you obviously, we talked about this when we first got here, is the history of defense backs that USC has brought back. And I know you mentioned smart, tough, beat their ass on. You know, have you, have you shown any of the old highlights being able to show, like, hey, you know, South Carolina, when they had that, that, that swag back in the DB uh, defensive backfield, you know? Um, I haven't shown any of those old highlights because, um, you know, we right now we got to learn what we're doing in this defense. So um, um, I think swagger comes with doing things right. Um, if we continuously do the little things right and those guys see that they'll have success by doing those little things right, the swagger will come. So, you know, we had 15 practices to go through in the spring and you know, we, we're not quite where we want to be now. We got more bodies added into, into this mix. And once guys are able to practice and understand, just do the little things right and all the other stuff, it'll, it'll, you'll have success. And then with success comes that swagger. I, you know, it's, we're just in that process. A guy like Carlin's Patel, I mean, he's had the opportunity to learn about what three or four different playbooks are in his time at Assumption. Now he comes in over here. I know it's a... It's a bigger, it's a, it's a bigger league now. But the point being is, how much can that help a player like that making that jump, having so many different coaches changes when he was over at Virginia? Well, the biggest thing that helps Carlin's is he's a smart football player and he's a football junkie. The game's important to him, so you know if he had three or four different playbooks at Assumption, and he comes here, you know he just because of how he carries himself like a professional, it's not going to be as hard of a transition for him. So um, I'm excited to see. All those guys, I'm excited to see him and, and, and kind of where does that translate to how he plays um, starting tomorrow. What do you expect out of Prunty con considering the year he had at Kansas last year and the accolades he received? I expect him to, to be a, a, a playmaker for us, to be a big time guy for us. That's going to be a process. Um, like I say, he's in the process of learning the playbook. So just like Carlin's and all these guys, man, I'm just excited to see him. Um, go for a live full practice tomorrow and um, kind of, okay, okay, and keep keep banging on whatever momentum we're build, able to build from tomorrow. I think you might have said in the past that you want to play a lot of man, you want to be uh, very tight in coverage, you still feel that way as you go into practice? Yeah, and that's kind of what Coach White's system demands. We're gonna, we we want to be up in guys' faces. One of his things is he wants to be physical with guys. And, you know, we want to make offenses earn what they're going to get and, when you play press man, um, you're sending that message, and you're also sending the message that you better be pretty good or you're going to give up some plays. So, you know, but it's the mentality, it's the mindset we want to play with, and, um, you know, um, hopefully he'll help us be a big part in doing that. You think you got the talent and the depth to be able to do that? I believe we do got enough talented guys to do it. It's just getting these guys experience, get them to have success and practice and being able to do it in enough time that transitions over to, you know, the season. Yeah, what do you look for during a fall camp at positions that are that are hotly contested, that are open? Mm -hmm. What is that? What are those ultimate separating factors? The ultimate separating factors when you got competition is um, guys who are doing all the little details right, guys who are lining the exact way they should be lining, guys who are going through the right progression exactly the way they should, guys who are reading their eye keys and have their eyes and j just are disciplined in doing those little detail things because those are going to allow those guys to make the plays that they would make by going through that process. The guys who don't go through that process consistently are not going to consistently make those same plays. How do you, you feel about your Cam during this time? I'm sorry? How do you encourage Cam during this time? Just... 
just tell him to go through the process. Um, he's in our meetings right now. We just had our first meeting. He's in the meeting and just go through the process, man. Prepare as if, you know, you know you're gonna play um, in the near future. Rehab, do all those things you gotta do, man. But um, he, he seems to be in a good headspace. Like I say, I, I feel horrible for him because he's having such a, a great summer and really think he's looking to take take this thing to another level. But, you know, it's a, a setback we, he's got to overcome. But, you know, I, I think he's in the right headspace, good headspace. Who do you think you are with your safeties as a group? Um, Besides RJ and Jalen, very, very inexperienced. Um, then we got JD back. You know, if we can keep him healthy, obviously that would help. And then we're very inexperienced after that. So those guys, like I say, just it's just the, the, the thing you're going to keep hearing me say, man, just got to get these guys to play, do all the little detail things. They'll have success, and then they'll gain more confidence. They'll gain swagger, and that's just – the process we got to go through right now, um, yeah. starting tomorrow. One of the issues with some of these guys in, the, in their careers has been tackling, you know, mm -hmm. just missing targets. Mm -hmm. Have you improved in that area? I know that's a big area of concentration for us. Um, we're in shorts tomorrow, but we will start off with some tackle emphasis. You know, you got to emphasize those things so we can be better at that. We got to coach a little details to those things so we can be better at that. Yes, sir. I know you didn't coach him here, but did you happen to see the video of the eBay hit in the Panthers camp a couple of days ago where they cut him? No, I didn't see that. See that? Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, there seemed to be some, some people saying he didn't do anything worth it. He, he knocked a guy, well, he hit a receiver, took him to the ground hard. He got receiver got concussed, had to go off in the, camp, in the ambulance. And they cut eBay. Right. And uh, he apologized. But you, you look at the film, you're like, it looked like he was trying to take the guy out. Uh -huh. He was just trying to make a play on the ball. So right. He got a chance to see, see him play. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I, I didn't see it, so I can't come in on yeah. it. But yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. unfortunate yeah. there. So. Coach, what's the process like um, when you get a guy in? Is he going to be a safety? Is he going to be a nickel? Is he going to be a corner? Are you big on? Cross training your guys, or are you much more in on like, okay, let's get you at this one spot and and get you comfortable and um, in first and foremost, or does it just depend on the? In kid? the big picture, you want to cross train guys. Yeah. But for the immediate success of that new kid, mm -hmm. you're better off putting them at one position and letting them learn that, so they can gain some confidence, and then as they have a better understanding of what they're doing at that position, then try to have them broaden their horizon to another position, maybe to cross train, mm -hmm. but. You probably got to get them in at one position first and, and get them honed in, and then you can start the cross training process. But yeah, big picture wise, we love for all our guys to be able to play a couple of positions. Do you have a feel for which guys are in the mix at that nickel spot yet? And uh, you sort of you pull from the safeties, pull from the corners? With that yeah, spot, kind of? that's uh, one way you got to pull from a couple of positions. Right now, we got David Spalding, who played all spring with us. Mm -hmm. Carlin Partell is coming in, and um, he'll. He'll give us some some competition there. You got, um, and other than that, you got corners that we're pulling from to be additional nickel guys for us. Cam Smith got to play some nickel. He plays some in our um, penny package. We got um, Marcel Dow that's got to be able to understand and play some nickel for us. We got um, Joey Hunter. So you got to be able to pull from, like I say, most guys got to know a couple spots. Cool. Appreciate it, Thank you. Yep. Thank you.